Uh, the Department of, and I just want to acknowledge that we're joined by Councilmember Ben Kalos, and I suspect members will join us as the hearing unfolds. The Department of Investigations has the authority to investigate city agencies, as well as a select set of public benefit corporations and public authorities that operate exclusively in New York City, NYCHA and H&H &H being among them. Those investigations will often result in policy and procedure recommendations commonly known as PPRs. I'm going to refer to these PPRs as reforms. Once DOI recommends reforms, an agency reserves the right to either accept or reject the reforms. An agency reserves the right to agree or decline to implement the reforms. The committee has several questions about the history of DOI reforms. To what extent do agencies agree to implement reforms? To what extent do agencies implement the agreed upon reforms? And to what extent does DOI track the implementation of the reforms that agencies have agreed to implement? The answer to all of these questions is unclear. It is fair to say that DOI has no historical practice of comprehensively and consistently tracking the implementation of its own reforms, one by one, agency by agency. Without, systemic, without systematic tracking by DOI, agencies have less of an incentive to implement reforms and the public has no means of knowing whether agencies are implementing reforms as promised. An investigation is only as good as the real world result it produces. It is only as good as the follow up and follow through. As a city, we cannot afford a hit and run approach to investigations. We cannot content ourselves to issue reports and then move on to the next order of business. We have to follow up, follow through, and see to it that city agencies are implementing reforms that make government more transparent and more accountable, more effective and more ethical. We have to be oriented toward producing real world results rather than simply issuing reports. The Committee on Oversight and Investigation is therefore considering intro 1440 which would require DOI to create an online dashboard that systematically tracks the implementation of reforms one by one, agency by agency. A dashboard would enable us as private citizens and as elected officials to hold DOI accountable for holding agencies accountable, and it would enable us to hold those agencies accountable directly. The DOI dashboard, once established, would represent the most comprehensive accountability and transparency transparency tool since the creation of the mayor's management report. <laughs> but unlike the MMR, the DOI dashboard is going to be principally informed by independent investigations rather than merely by agency self-reporting. The legislation would represent a triumph of good government in the age of open data. The dashboard will tell us which reforms agencies have agreed to implement and whether agencies have in fact implemented those reforms as promised. What the dashboard will not do is assign a letter or number grade. Reducing the dashboard to a crude numbers game would do a disservice to the complexity of DOI investigations and the reforms that result from them. Not all reforms are created equal. Not all reforms are simple, simple to implement. Some reforms are a matter of life and death and some are simply a matter of paperwork. Context matters the dashboard will provide a qualitative rather than a quantitative analysis that offers context. The purpose of the dashboard is not to shame agencies with letter grades like we do with businesses. The purpose here is to inform the public about the workings of their own government and to do so comprehensively and consistently. And with that said, I will afford the commissioner an opportunity to offer an opening statement. Uh, commissioner, can you raise your right hand? Uh, do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee and to respond honestly to council members' questions? I do. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman Torres and members of the Committee on Oversight and Investigations. My name is Margaret Garnett, and I'm the Commissioner of the New York City Department of Investigation. Thank you for inviting me to address the committee's proposed bill, Intro 1440, which would require DOI to create a web application to track and assess agency cooperation and compliance with investigations and recommendations. DOI's mission is rooted in exposing and stopping corruption, fraud, waste, and other abuses that undermine city government's ability to effectively serve all New Yorkers. We have a unique role within city government as an independent fact finder with a mission to conduct investigations, hold public officials accountable, 
and strengthen city government by sharing our investigative findings. Through DOI's investigations, we uncover individual wrongdoing and also expose systemic issues and vulnerabilities that undermine good government and access to quality government services. In order to ensure the vulnerabilities we uncover are addressed, we routinely issue policy and procedure recommendations, which as the chairman noted are also called PPRs, that aim to help agencies close the corruption-related gaps that we find and recommend concrete ways to improve and strengthen operations and internal controls. Increasing transparency and accountability within city government is also an important part of DOI's mission. DOI already reports our aggregate PPR numbers, as well as the percentage of those PPRs that have been accepted by city agencies in the Mayor's Management Report each fiscal year. Beginning in the fiscal 2020 report, we will further break out the percentage of PPRs across the city that have been accepted and the percentage of accepted PPRs that have been implemented by the agencies. But these numbers only tell part of the story, scratching the surface of DOI's investigative findings and the efforts made by both DOI and city agencies in reforming and improving city operations. I understand that prior to my appointment in December 2018, this committee had already begun discussions with DOI about the possibility of a public website for tracking DOI's PPRs. The idea is significant providing a window for the public into DOI's compelling work in a way that goes beyond our press releases on arrests or our public reports and reflects the wide-reaching impact that our investigations have on the city. Equally important, it potentially allows the public and other city agencies an opportunity to review vulnerabilities citywide and even for city agencies to spot vulnerabilities found in other entities that may usefully be addressed in their own organization as well. In short, providing greater public visibility into DOI's policy and procedure recommendations can lead to more ideas about strengthening city government, as well as greater understanding, greater transparency, excuse me, and hopefully greater public understanding of the breadth and complexity of New York City government. Over the past 11 months, a team at DOI has been working hard to create a database model that ensures information on our PPRs is both accurate and fair. We have also focused on ensuring that any public database would create the appropriate balance between safeguarding sensitive information on investigations and the right of the public to know how their government operates. Moreover, as the chairman noted, all PPRs are not created alike. Some address relatively minor issues, while some address significant systemic changes. Some are more costly or difficult to implement, while others may require the approval or cooperation of other entities. In light of these complexities, we have thought carefully about the best way to present that context and to provide additional information on implementation so that any database provides a comprehensive and fair picture of DOI's recommendations at any given agency. Because of these complexities, I would caution a database of PPRs should not be and is not intended to be a means to pit city agencies against each other or derive a score or grade for individual city agencies. Each agency's mission, operation, and challenges are different, and with few exceptions, PPRs are tailored to that agency and should be viewed as such. Our focus at DOI is to combine outstanding investigative skills, a high level of professionalism, and a deep knowledge of the specific work of each agency. We hope that the database, when it is fully operational, will provide a better understanding of the wide-ranging work that results from that approach and support greater civic engagement with how city government functions. DOI is currently working internally with a database prototype, and we are steadily moving towards a public platform that would include all of DOI's PPRs from January of 2014 through the present day. The process has been painstaking and arduous. On the data input side, we have had to ensure that information was correct and that DOI had the most up-to-date status regarding recommendations from dozens of city agencies and entities. On the technical and design side, we are working to ensure the database will be user-friendly, accessible, and functional. We have also engaged with our partners at city agencies to ensure accuracy and a presentation that effectively presents the context of each PPR. I believe we are approaching the final stages of these processes. We expect to unveil an effective, accurate database by the summer of 2020 and possibly earlier. As presently envisioned, the database would include the following fields. First, the date the PPR was issued to the agency. Second, the agency or entity to, which, to whom the PPR was issued. 
Third, the text of the PPR as issued. Fourth, whether the PPR was accepted. Fifth, whether the PPR has been implemented, and each of those would be yes-no fields. And finally, a field for the receiving agency's comments, if any. This last field will be populated from a menu of choices developed in consultation with city agencies and provides an opportunity for agencies to provide additional context about their implementation decisions. The database will be maintained by DOI and be accessible through DOI's main website. It will be a living database, meaning that not only will we be updating the database with new PPRs going forward, but also that I envision us finding ways to improve user experience and to provide more contextual information to the PPRs as time goes by. Last year during my confirmation testimony, I told this council that in my decisions as DOI commissioner, I would be guided only by what is in the public interest with total fidelity to the facts and the law. Those have been the guiding principles at DOI as we have worked to refine and strengthen this database to ensure that it is accurate and that it provides a clear and fair picture of both DOI's work and the reforms taking place across city government. DOI's mission is fundamentally about protecting the public's interest in honest government. This database is part of that mission, and it is why we are committed to launching it in a smart and measured way that encourages public transparency, that safeguards the integrity of ongoing and future investigations, that protects confidential information, and that provides an accurate picture of the reform process at each agency. Our goal is to ensure that any public database will be an extension of DOI's mission by maintaining independence, fairness, honesty, and a fidelity to the facts. Thank you again for the opportunity to comment on this proposed legislation. My staff and I remain available to discuss this matter further with the committee. Thank you, Commissioner, for your testimony. Uh, we've been joined by Councilmember Diana Ayala from the South Bronx. Um, since it seems like DOI and the council are largely in agreement, so I'm only gonna ask a few questions and then I'll hand it off to my colleagues. Um, I, I made the observation that DOI had no tradition of systematically tracking the implementation of PPRs, reforms. I, is that an analysis that you share? What's, what's your own sense of, of DOI's so, role in tracking PPRs? So I think that um, what, what is different about how we're approaching it now is that in the past, um, that had been a process that had been located more with individual IGs for the agencies and different inspector generals at DOI had different methods for keeping track and for following up with agencies. And while in the past there had been some agency-wide efforts undertaken um, to trigger regular follow-up, to maintain records, I think what this database represents is um, an effort that would have an agency wide, a single place agency wide, both internally and ultimately public facing, um, that would show all of the PPRs and an accurate and up to date assessment of where the agencies are in both agreement and implementation. Now, DOI has begun the process of creating its own dashboard. Are there any notable differences, as far as you can tell, between the dashboard you're creating internally and the one that's contemplated in intro in, in the legislation before the council? No, I think the primary difference is that the internal database, as, as you would expect, has the capacity to, you know, have, to cross-reference things within DOI, to have a place for notes and things of that nature that wouldn't necessarily be um, a public record or public facing, um, but the goal both internally and public facing is to have a single place that in which all of our policy and procedure recommendations are collected and that is maintained on a regular basis as to the most recent status of those recommendations. The term accepting our PPR, or accepting a recommendation um, is amorphous at some level because I can, you know, I can accept a recommendation but refuse to implement the recommendation because of logistics or resources, or I can reject the recommendation because I disagree with your underlying investigative findings. There's a sense in which, even though one person is using the word accept and the other is using the word reject, there's a sense in which both are rejections because both represent a refusal to implement reforms that DOI has deemed necessary. So how do you distinguish between those nuances? So, I mean, I think the first thing that I would say is that in our experience, um, 
as a general matter and overall, I think the agencies engage with us in good faith on agreeing or rejecting um, in that it has not been my experience in general that agencies agree just for yeah. superficial agreement with no intention to but both of those both of those examples can happen in good faith you could yes i can yes i can accept your recommendation in principle but i simply lack the resources to implement it right and versus i disagree with your investigative findings but both of them are represent a ref, you know a, a decision not to implement the recommendation yes and so i think the difference between um agreement and implementation is why um we proposed, and it's been accepted by the mayor's office for operations, that beginning with fiscal 2020, historically in the mayor's management report, the only consolidated number that we reported was the percentage of PPRs that had been agreed to by the agencies. And we didn't have a separate way of reliably tracking implementation across all of DOI. So, Beginning in the fiscal year that we're in currently, we are tracking and will be reporting um, the same percentage for agreed or rejected, but also a, a collective percentage for implemented or not implemented. Yeah. And that, that, that difference will be reflected also in the database that we're working on preparing now so that um, to better capture, I think, this distinction that I think that you're getting yeah. at, which is that Agencies can agree, but if they lack the resources or they don't have buy-in from their unions or whatever other um, factors might be at play in implementation, um, and we wanted to find a way to track and reflect the difference between agreement and implementation, which um, I believe that we are on track to be accurately capturing that difference. But, but acceptance does not necessarily mean agreement to implement. Right. Okay. I mean, I think... So at some level, we leave it to agencies to determine what qualifies as acceptance of a recommendation. Well, uh, to some extent, but we are engaged in conversations with agencies when PPRs are issued. So it's not a, um, it's not simply a one-way process. Um, our goal is to have PPRs be of a nature that agencies will accept and implement. Um, and ultimately, we are applying our own independent judgment as to what we think the recommendation should be. Um, but the goal is to be in conversation with agencies so that the recommendations accurately reflect what the agencies are currently doing, what is possible for them to do. Um, and to, to my mind, agreement means that we agree with the recommendation as a policy matter, and we will take steps to implement it. I think what happens after that um, is influenced by a variety of factors, some within the agency's control and some outside of its control. Now, in your testimony, you said the database, as you envision it, is going to have six fields. And the sixth field is, quote, a field for receiving agency's comments. So the dashboard would include DOI's perspective, the agency's perspective. What about comments from external stakeholders? What if an external stakeholder, it could be the external stakeholder whose request triggered the investigation, said, I, I disagree with uh, DOI's analysis. I disagree that this agency implemented the reforms. And, and I is there going to be some mechanism by which the opinions of external stakeholders are going to be included in the dashboard as DOI envisions it? Is that something you're open to? So we currently have no capacity yeah. to do that, and I think, um, you know, that for a variety of reasons is a challenge that I think is beyond our ability to implement. The, the information that is currently going to be in this PPR tracking database is all information that is sort of in the possession and, and control of DOI. I do think that one of the... Um, one of the benefits of this database in a public-facing way is that a variety of external stakeholders, to use your term, whether they're elected officials, community groups, um, advocacy groups that have a particular interest in a topic, um, will be able to use the database as tools to inform themselves as well as take whatever action um, they think is in their interest to respond to those recommendations or to hold the agencies accountable or to disagree with them if they disagree. 
Is there, and again, I'm, I'm no expert on technology. Actually, Councilmember Kalos is more of the in-house expert on technology. Um, but could there be, could, could there be a field where you could upload comments, external stakeholders could upload comments as one could in a Wikipedia page. Uh, again, I don't know what's feasible, but is, if, if that were feasible, is that something that you could be open to supporting in principle? So I think it's not feasible in this phase. Um, a tremendous amount of effort has gone into the quality control of the data that we're preparing to unveil um, when the database goes public next year. Um, and so to add fields now, I think it's not feasible. But as I said, I think we'll continue to refine and consider changes. Um, I guess personally, I, I don't know how much time you spend on the internet, Chairman Torres, but I, I'm not sure that a public, a publicly open comment field is useful for the purpose. Well, I'll, I'll give an example of how I think, let's, you know, suppose there's a hearing regarding ACS, right? And in preparation for the budget hearing, I want to look at the DOI dashboard and see, you know, what reforms did ACS agree to implement? What did DOI say about the status of the implementation? But I also might want to see what what do external th stakeholders and if there were exception, if there were a section that allowed me to view the opinions of external stakeholders about the reforms and the implementation of the reforms, that that would only enhance my ability as a council member to do better oversight. Because I have the agency's perspective, I have the external perspective, I have the DOI perspective. So I think that external stakeholders have a lot of places to air their views. I, I'm I'm certainly open to continuing the conversation. I think I'm I, I'm reluctant to take on for DOI yeah. a task of collating, managing, and publici publicizing the opinions of groups that we don't necessarily have an ongoing relationship with. It would be difficult for us to take on the responsibility of assessing. You know, we issue on average over 500 PPRs a year. Um, so to take on the task of trying to assess and be fair and with equal treatment, which different groups are interested in which issues, which groups have spoken about it. Um, I think managing that and collating that is a task that I'd be reluctant for DOI to take on. I think we are good at and getting better at, I hope, um, managing and ensuring the accuracy of our own data um, and to, to expand that beyond um, what we sort of keep track of and collect in-house um, might have some concerns about that. You said you produce 500 PPRs every year? Uh, I would say uh, looking at on the average? past five years, okay. that's about the average, yes. And the dashboard, as you contemplate it, will include PPRs dating back to January of 2014, the beginning of the de Blasio administration, right? That's right. So, and how, how large is that number of PPRs? Um, it's about 3,500, I believe. 35. Because part of the purpose of the dashboard is to, you know, New York City is a labyrinth of $90 billion worth of agencies, right? So how do we distill the story of New York City government in manageable chunks? But what was the number you said, 3,500? It's about 3,500. 3,500 is overwhelming, right? And, and I agree that, you know, not all reforms are, are equally important. Some are matters of life and death, some are matters of paperwork. Is there some means by which we can highlight for the public which, which reforms are the most important from the perspective of DOI that, that warrant the most attention so that it's not lost in the jumble of 3,500 PPRs? Um, so I think we, you know, I would be reluctant to rank PPRs um, in terms of which are most important. Again, I think because of what I mentioned that the, the relative importance of PPRs will depend on the agency. Um, some agencies have a very narrow mission, and so a PPR that might be very important to the functioning of that small agency might be viewed by some as not as important in terms of a citywide issue or an issue that affects many people. Um, you know, there are agencies that are on the front lines of public health and safety, other agencies that are doing important work, but that just doesn't have the urgency that ACS or corrections or, or the police department, just to take a few examples. So I think our goal with the database is to make information available. Um, in a way that is transparent and accurate. And so 
I, I do think that is quite possible, and I think uh, effective civic engagement would mean that whether it's advocacy groups or the council or city hall or other city agencies, um, we'll be able to take that information and use it as a tool um, to have more effective advocacy for community groups, to have more thoughtful oversight for the council um, or for city hall. So I think I do not see DOI as being in the business of ranking agencies in terms of the importance of their work or um, ranking PPRs, but we hope that by making the data available in a way that I think will be user friendly and, and efficient for people to find the things they care about, um, that it will make advocacy by these other entities uh, more feasible, more focused, more targeted. Along the same lines, so we're in agreement that the dashboard should not reduce city government to a numbers game, right? But, but I could imagine that there are some agencies that have a pattern of complying with DOI recommendations, accepting DOI recommendations and implementing them as promised. And then there are others that might have a pattern of rejecting DOI recommendations or failing to implement those recommendations as promised. Uh, is that something that we should, is there some way by which we should communicate that to the public, which agencies are more cooperative than others? Or generally? Um, or? Again, I, I don't view that as DOI's role and um, I'm not sure that that's an effective comparison because agencies have different constraints under which they operate. Um, and, you know, whether that is collective bargaining or financial issues or um, difficulties, constraints placed on them by state law, um, in the case of ACS being one example. So, um, and, and I think those the relationships between DOI and its agencies sort of ebb and flow over time. Um, and there will, I'm sure, be times where a given commissioner of an agency has a different vision or priorities for how to operate the agency than our experts at DOI have. So, you know, it is a process that mirrors, I think, the complexity of New York City government as a whole. And so, personally, I, I don't think that comparing agencies or, or even the labeling the percentage of agreement and implementation as an indicator of cooperation versus non-cooperation, I don't think that's going to be universally true or, or a fair, particularly fair way to evaluate agencies. Is DOI's dashboard, as you're envisioning it, going to include information about the Department of Education? No. So the Special Commissioner for Investigation is responsible for the Department of Education, um, and we have not included their recommendation. They, they maintain the case management system and their records separate from the core of DOI. But so Under the charter, the Special Commissioner, although independent, has a reporting obligation to DOI. That's right. Right. So can... Can the deal, uh, one could imagine a situation in which the special commissioner reports the relevant information to DOI and then DOI includes the information. What, what's odd is, you know, a, a dashboard that fails to include one third of city government is deeply deficient. Uh, and that might be a, a major point of disagreement between DOI and the council. And this is a point on which I'm going to push very hard. But it feels it would be odd not to include the largest city agency or, or a city entity in, in the dashboard. Yeah, and, and as I said, you know, I think that's certainly something that we can explore. Okay. And our focus now is on getting the dashboard to a place with high quality control where it's something that can be rolled out to the public um, in the near term. And so, you know, I think the possibility of adding a section on SCI for the Department of Education is something we can certainly explore down the road. Understood. Um, are there, you have jurisdiction over city agencies under the charter over a set of public benefit corporations and public authorities via MOU. Are there any entities over any governmental entities over which you have jurisdiction that will not be included in the dashboard? No. Okay. Uh, those are the extent of my questions. Uh, Councilmember Ayala, do you have any questions? Or? Are recommendations voluntary or are they like mandated requirements? Uh, they are voluntary. They are voluntary. So we, we, we don't have any authority to force agencies to make any particular change. 
So um, we make our recommendations and then their agreement or rejection and implementation or non-implementation is, is voluntary. How do you currently track that? I'm sorry if I missed it because I was a little bit late. Um, so historically we have tracked only the um, dimension of agreed or rejected for PPRs. And we have had various um, inconsistent ways internally of tracking implementation. Starting last year and moving forward, we have begun an effort that will be reflected in the database and in the MMR of also tracking, continuing to track agreed or rejected as a binary dimension, but also tracking um, the implementation status at the agencies in one central place. So, um, so we will continue as a historical comparison the tracking of whether agencies have agreed to or rejected PPRs, but we also have begun tracking and will begin reporting um, on implementation, uh, yes or no. So are PPRs, uh, are those recommendations made after an investigation of an agency, after a complaint of an agency? How does that work? So our recommendations are based on our own investigations, and um, those investigations can can begin in a variety of ways, uh, referrals from the council, referrals from the agency itself, complaints from the public, um, com information from city employees. So there's a huge range of ways that our investigations begin, but we base our recommendations on our own fact finding that we do in the course of investigations. And those recommendations are made in writing to the agencies, um, typically in the form of a referral letter, which is a, a letter that goes to the agency head. Um, if it, so if a complaint is, is serious in nature and you're making a recommendation, but it's voluntary, then how is that addressed? Is it does it just stay there? I mean, is, is is it never rectified? I'm not sure I understand. If some, if you're, if you're, if you're coming into, if you go into an organization and there's a serious complaint that was made and that merited the OI becoming involved, and you made recommendations based on findings of that investigation, mm -hmm. and they're serious in nature, mm -hmm. but you're saying that the the agency uh, can voluntarily decide whether or not they want to take you up on those recommendations. And I don't, I don't, I just seems to be like a disconnect for me. I'm not sure if I'm, if I'm understanding then what the procedure is. Yeah, so it's true that it is up to the agencies to agree or reject and to implement or not implement. I think historically, if you look, um, you know, at the last five years is easy to assess because that's how far back the MMR reporting goes. Our acceptance rate overall is, hovers around 75%. Um, so 75% of our total recommendations during that period, approximately, have been agreed to by agencies. And um, we don't have implementation numbers for that whole period, but um, I think one example of an agency where we have been tracking agreement and implementation separately is for the police department. Um, since the creation of the police department inspector general, the, the local law 70 mandated an annual public report that would track all recommendations from the beginning of that office um, and their current status of those recommendations with the police department. So I think that provides a good example of what but if the information is not public, I think I get where Council Member Torres is, 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 you know, bill kind of would allow the DOI a little bit more teeth, right? And that we're holding people accountable, we're holding agencies accountable. Because if it's voluntary, then there's no real incentive, you know, to follow up on the recommendation. Well, I, and this may sound naive, but um, I hope that all commissioners of city agencies share our goal of effective city government. And I think that the percentages of agreed upon recommendations are pretty high because our work is of high quality. And in general, I think most commissioners of city agencies want to improve how they do things, want to address corruption vulnerabilities. Yeah. And I think that's reflected in the, the numbers. It is true that um, I think one benefit of this public facing database is, as I said before, to give tools to advocates, to elected officials, to track issues that are of particular interest or concern to them, and use whatever other tools are available to hold agencies accountable or to have 
more complex, deeper discussions about the issues that are reflected in those recommendations. Do you have an idea of how many, what, what the percentage is of recommendations that you've made to city agencies that have actually been implemented? So I, I can only estimate that at this point because we are still um, quality checking that data. But if, if on average the number of agreed to is around 75%, um, I would estimate that on average the implementation numbers are between probably 50 and 60 percent. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, the committee has been joined by Councilmember Powers. Councilmember Powers, do you want to ask any questions? Or? Okay, great. Um, so I have no more questions, Commissioner, uh, except to, you know, I believe strongly that external stakeholders should have a voice, and I believe strongly that DOE should be part of the dashboard. Uh, and so those are principles that I want to advance as we negotiate the bill. I certainly want to make it workable for DOI, but I feel it's important that one third of city government is included in the dashboard and that external stakeholder perspective is, is as available to the public as DOI perspective and agency perspective. Um, with that said, I have no more. Oh, um, Council Member Calvin Yeager, thank you for joining us. Uh, so with that said, I, Thank you, Commissioner, for your testimony. Thank you. We will call up the second panel. Um, Tawaki Komatsu, is that? Um, Thank you. Um, hi. Um, I proved we have a, cl a two minute clock. Okay. And, and, um, I, and I would urge you to remain on topic to the extent that you can. I always am, I'm like you. After testifying to you on March 26, 2018 and March 26, 2019, and otherwise talking with you outside of City Hall, I have every reason to believe that you lied to me about commitments you made in relation to my testimony and okay. otherwise shirked you your can you remove legal and ethical I, responsibilities I, I think by having you, not intervened on my behalf and those of other military veterans and New Yorkers whose interests my conversations with you have also been. So your, your testimony is irrelevant to it the is. subject of the hearing. So um, excuse me, I have a First Amendment right to testify and you're violating that? The, the, you have no right to testify before the City Council. That's not. You have a right to speak wherever you want, but this council has rules, and if you refuse to comply with those rules, then we're done here. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This hearing's adjourned.
Um, he was asking if he would open. He was asking about keeping it open to have some other people arrive. Because we can't vote on, so, I mean, just to register their attendance. We, we didn't adjourn. Yeah, so then we, no, no, before he adjourned it. And then we were talking, you know, Council of Empowers was saying, like, two of them are not coming. So there were two left, but we voted out. I was like, I don't know. What is it for? Yeah, two, but two weren't coming. Like, we I mean, aren't coming, because the council member on the council member knew that they weren't. So. Lance Lanceman, Traeger, Solomon. Lanceman and Solomon. He didn't hear that they were or anything.